Today, I'd like to introduce you to four artists who love to use the symbol for love in their artwork. We'll start with a street artist named James Goldcrown. Move on to one of my favorites, Chris Uphughes. We'll look at the colorful and patterntastic art of Romero Brito and the artwork of Jim Dine, who does sculptures of hearts as well as paintings. Let's start with Jay Goldcrown. He's a street artist. That means he's paid to create beautiful masterpieces on walls outside. We could also call those murals. He does what's called bleeding heart walls. Let's give it a shot. You've got a piece of paper that's been folded four times, and today we're going to use chalk. The chalk is going to look quite a bit like spray paint if you draw a heart, go over it a couple of times, and then massage it with your finger. Now it has that soft, kind of spray painted look. Now when you massage your next color, you might want to use a different finger. If you use the same finger over and over again, your colors will start to blend. What Jay Goldcrown does is he does a lot of overlapping hearts. He fills the entire wall with these hearts. So in the time that you have, try to fill your entire rectangle with as many hearts as you can. Some big, some small, overlapping them, going off the page. That will be very similar to the artist that we're learning about. When you're finished, you might want to wipe off your fingers before we move on to our next rectangle. All right, your turn. Let's see your chalk hearts. Another street artist who uses hearts in his art is Chris Uphughes, but instead of using spray paint, he creates the hearts and then pastes them with something called wheat paste to the walls outside so everybody can enjoy them. To kind of give our paper a wall-like texture, we're going to use oil pastels, and I'm doing something called a rubbing. I'm holding the oil pastel like it's shh sleeping and massaging the paper, which gives my paper a really great rough wall-like texture. Let's make a heart. I'm folding my paper in half, and as most of you know, when you draw a heart, your heart needs to begin and end on the fold. I'm trying to make a very large heart to fill the entire space. After you cut out your heart, if you ended up with two hearts or half hearts, you'll need to try it again. That means you drew it on the open side. I'm going to use a Sharpie, and with my Sharpie, I am outlining my heart. When I'm finished outlining my heart to really make it stand out, I'm going to draw a face. You can draw any kind of face that you want to on your heart. In fact, after you're finished with one heart and you've got a face on there, if you want to trade your scrap papers with your neighbor to make a smaller heart, you could do that. When your heart face is finished, go ahead, put glue around the edges and glue it to your background. The painter and sculptor Romero Brito, his artwork is full of pattern and color, baby color. So we are going to focus on that for our next rectangle. To begin, we will be using oil pastels again, and your first step will be to draw about four or five lines to break up the space of that rectangle. Now that you've broken up the space, you've created shapes. Inside of each shape, add a different color of oil pastel. Make sure to color neatly, please, filling in all little bitty white spots. When you're finished adding the color, you'll need to get a black oil pastel. Now remember, we're using oil pastels not to be confused with chalk. If you are ever unsure, oil pastels feel a little bit sticky, whereas chalk always feels a little bit dusty. Chalk also tends to smear everywhere, while oil pastels are more like a crayon. All right, now that my space is filled up, I'm going to use my black oil pastel to draw a nice big heart. Then I'm going to go back and outline those very first lines that I drew, but only the ones that are inside the heart, not on the outside. I wanted my heart to stand out, so I outlined it a bit. Inside of each section, I'm creating patterns. Romero Brito loves patterns, so I'm trying to create something a little bit different inside of each section, but the sections are pretty tiny, so if you have to repeat a line or shape design, that is okay. 
Our last artist to chat about is the artist Jim Dine, who's a sculptor and a painter also. He also uses hearts in his paintings, making them look very thick and three-dimensional. So let's give that a shot. Your first step is you're going to use a pencil to lightly draw a heart. We'll also be using something called paint sticks, which you are going to love. So first, I'm drawing a nice big heart. Now my paint sticks are divided in warm or cold colors. So for the background, you need to decide if you want all warm, like I'm using, or all cold colors. And what I do when I use this is I create little spots of color by just kind of wiggling the stick. You don't need to pound the paint stick. That will actually damage the paint stick and make it so we don't have this really cool art supply. So you can either gently massage it or draw little bitty lines. And I'm completely filling up the background with my warm colors. Now that I'm done with that, I'm moving on to my cold colors. Those are some little lines you could also make. That's because I'm wanting a little bit of variety. I don't want my background and my heart to be the same, so I'm just trying something a little bit different with my cold colors on the inside of the heart. Now, my heart is starting to disappear a little bit. It's getting hard to see. So we are going to actually make it so it stands out a little bit. We're going to outline it with a black oil pastel. Jim Dine's hearts look very three-dimensional, even though his canvas is very flat. So to do that, I'm going to now massage my finger over the oil pastel to give it a little bit of a 3D look. Woo, we've learned about so many artists and I cannot wait to see what you create.